I'd like to call the Jamaica Select Board meeting to order June 22nd. Um, first on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the June 8th meeting. If we just review that and uh, see if there's any omissions or corrections. <laughs> Uh, number 11, Mr. Coyne reported that the property at 227 Depot Street will be secured by the owner. They were really just like looking into the possibility of securing it. So we can change the wording? Yeah, I would a little bit. That's okay. not actually what they that he said he would do. Okay, looking into securing it. Are there any other corrections? Make a motion to accept the minutes with the one correction on number 11. Do we have a second? Second. Um, any further discussion on the minutes? If not, uh, hearing none, um, lost my words. I can't believe it. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, I was thinking of something else. Uh, approve, number two, approve the time sheets of the town office, <coughs> excuse me, Lister's Highway Transfer Station. Number three is select board to review and sign the select board orders. Um, public concerns, we don't have public concerns here, but I'm going to move the agenda around a little bit if it's to um, make it easier for some of the folks who are here. Um, one of them I forgot, and I do apologize for that. Um, but the first one I'd like to put next would be number nine, um, to transfer funds from the general fund to the reserve fund. Uh, I had Lou and Terry look over that paperwork, and uh, Lou has the figures in front of him. So would you please go ahead and tell us what we're going to move? Okay. Um, uh, turning currently, our budget uh, allows for us to spend. Uh, $1,111,916. Currently, up to, to, uh, to date, we spent $1,044,580, with $67,000 uh, approximately left to, uh, uh, that we could possibly spend this year. Uh, we have $87,500 that we uh, have scheduled to move over to reserve accounts. So as you can see, we have less to move into reserve accounts than we, uh, than we have money to... Uh, so therefore, what I would, would like to propose is that we move... Uh, well, what we expect uh, uh, the rest of the year to cost about 15000 which leaves about 52000 actually available to move. I would, rec I would suggest that we move 52000 uh, approximately to our reserve accounts, and I'll go over in detail what those numbers will be. Um, we do have a surplus this year uh, of about thirty-four thousand. So, if we add that money, we need to ask the town voters on how to uh, how to spend. I would suggest that we recommend to the voters that we use that money to uh, fill the void that we're going to have uh, of approximately thirty-five thousand. So, um, okay, and that surplus is from where? Would you explain that, please? Okay, it's a, it's a revenue surplus. Our revenues exceeded our budget by 34171 at the, at the moment. So, therefore, uh, uh, that revenue surplus uh, is available for the town to decide how to, uh, how to spend. 
Is that minus the 15,000 for the rest of the year? No, that 15,000 has nothing to do with the revenue surplus. Because uh, we can only spend a certain, that, that 1,111,000. Mm -hmm. So the question I have is, we're talking about transferring funds from the general fund, where we can use them on a variety of things, to a reserve fund which has restricted use. Correct. Why? Why? Uh, because number one, we budgeted money to move into those reserve funds. Mm -hmm. uh, that has so to be done now. Because. That has to be done before the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I would like to move that we move $25,000 into the flood fund. And I'll give you these numbers afterwards. Uh, okay. 4000 into the transfer station fund, 5000 into the reappraisal fund, 2000 into the office equipment fund, 1500 into the town buildings fund, and approximately 15000 uh, into the highway fund. And I say approximately because uh, this would uh, allow whatever is remainder of that 111000 after all of our bills have been paid to move that money into the highway reserve fund. Does anybody have any other questions for Lou or Terry? Did you move to do that? I made a motion, yes. yes. Second that. Okay. Okay, does um, any, any further discussion? Uh, what, what about the uh, monies that go from the budgeted amount, let's say planning commission? And I know in the years past, what we did not spend in the planning commission went into our reserve fund. No, I don't hear I don't those think we have a, I don't think we have a planning commission reserve fund. I thought we did. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Did, did we roll it over last year Terry? Yeah. Because I don't think they spent it all. Yeah, because that's always been true as long as I've been connected. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's just see what the planning uh, commission budget uh, was. I think it's usually like two or four thousand. Yeah, we don't have in our budget money to move into the planning commission, so that's why I didn't have that number. Okay. But if you, we, 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 we can we can move money from the general from any part of the general fund into it. I thought that what money that is allocated in the budget each year. Let's say they get two thousand. That if the planning commission doesn't spend that two thousand during their fiscal year, that automatically goes into the reserve fund. Is that well, correct? Nothing, okay. Nothing's automatic unless we vote. Oh, okay. okay. But uh, okay. Yeah, that could be our tradition. Mm -hmm. So the planning commission. I'm Where is it? I don't even know. Just didn't spend. I think that they mm -hmm. have one. Right. Planning Commission, they do have funds that we allow for them right. in our budget. Here are the town report there. Right here. And if they don't, if, if I remember correctly, you tell me if I'm wrong, if they don't spend it all the year before when we're doing our budget, we put that into the next year's budget to offset some of the funds? Is that right, Terry? I've not ever done that. You haven't done that? I don't see anything in the budget for planning commission. But. Or do we just keep adding it up and then there, they get a, it just keeps adding it, one The planning commission next. reserve account may have come from uh, the past. Yeah, because I knew we did have some in. And basically one of the reasons why we kept adding into it to the reserve is every five years, you know, we have to have that new plan. And that usually costs some money right. to uh, do that new plan. Well, oh, we do have a well, town plan. No, we don't have anything in the budget that I can see. For the planning commission? Mm -hmm. huh. Now, it doesn't mean we, we can't change. You, you can amend that motion that I made, if you like. Well, I guess if we can afford it. Well, could you, would you go over those numbers again a little more slowly, please? Sure. I 25K to flood and I lost you. Okay. These are monies that were in our budget to move into reserve accounts. If we didn't spend them during the year. No. And we, we haven't Just spent them. We, we expected that. Mm -hmm. right. The flood account, we had planned on moving 25000 Okay. Transfer station, 4000 The reappraisal fund, 5000 Office equipment, 2000 Down the No down, please. Okay. I'm 
I'm still in the reappraisal. Okay. 5K to reappraisal. Right. Office equipment, 2,000. Town buildings, 1,500. And highway, we had budgeted to move 50,000. If you add all those up, they add up to 87 bucks. still looking at the planning commission what are we looking at where are we? Um, Paul asked me to just give the details again I just needed the numbers I, I guess it's just reading them off unless you want to are you talking about inserting I'm not talking about that no planning if Julie would like to she can uh, I, I do know that that there needs to be some kind of monies to well, there to nine thousand Let's see, we, we have some oh, money in here. We do, okay, all right. Oh, okay. I know we had money. Yeah, we do. I just thought that that chunk then was, or a good portion of it, was put over into the re, into a reserve fund named planning commission. Yeah, and we have it. 9400 in there. Okay. Yeah, and in fact, okay. she's just pointing out we didn't move any money in last year. That number's been kind of stagnant for the last few okay. years. Okay, does that help you? Yes. Yeah, because the, the, the facts coming up, believe it or not, in like two years again. I think so. The new plan, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Okay, so we had a motion, we had a second? It goes by fast. Any further discussion? Hearing, uh, hearing none, all in favor, say aye to moving approximately $52,000 from the general fund to the reserve fund with thirty-four thousand dollar revenue which will be approved by the voters um, to be put into the accounts that Lou had uh, suggested. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Right. Thank you Terry. Thank you Lou. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, number five is Laura Sebelia. Did I pronounce that properly? I did. And Laura is from? From the Federal Development Credit Corporation and SEDITS, which is Southeastern Vermont Economic Development Strategies. Uh, I'm the Director of Economic Development and Workforce Development for EDCC, Federal Development Credit Corp. Joe is the Project Manager, Joe Clark, from Southeastern Economic Development Strategies. Um, BDCC, just to let you folks know, is a regional planning, uh, regional development organization. There are 13 of them throughout the state, and we are the 27 town uh, economic development entity. We have, um, we have a number of new and um, existing staff at BDCC, uh, including a new executive director. We've had a couple in the past year. We had Jeff Lewis was with us for a number of years. I don't know if you folks met with him. Then we had Pat Moulton until she went back up to be the Secretary of Commerce. Uh, we have an interim in Stephen Morse, and we have a fantastic new executive director, Adam Grenold. He's a uh, younger native Vermonter, family entrepreneur. And he has asked our staff to go out, um, get a regular system going where we are coming and listening uh, to what's happening in our municipalities, uh, making sure that we understand the challenges or opportunities uh, that you folks are facing and that we're developing appropriate support systems for economic development. 
and also to make sure you're aware of the programs and services that we have. So you are our first stop on the whirlwind tour. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna figure out what we did right or wrong, and you can let us know tomorrow. Um, what we wanna talk to you about really briefly, um, we wanna give you a sense of a couple of high-level projects, three high-level projects that are going on right now through the region, one of which we feel um, is really a, kind of an urgent situation for all of our municipalities, uh, the workforce, workforce project. And then give you an opportunity if you have questions, um, you know, to just answer those questions for you. We'd like to ask to get on your agenda distribution so we have a sense of, you know, hey, it might be good for us to come up and just hear this conversation. Um, and then we may stay and just listen for a little while and see how things are, what things are interesting up here. So, so uh, SEBEDS is a grassroots organization. It was founded by uh, Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation. Have you folks heard of SEBITS? Some of you? Okay. Yes. Okay. And that is a regional board, regional group of folks that were originally looking at expanding broadband. Why don't we have it? We noticed that you guys have some great broadband. Joe said somebody must have worked real hard for you on that. Mm -hmm. They so. <laughs> um, But looking at how, uh, how we could expand broadband since 2007 and starting to teach ourselves and where it was, who the providers were, why they were here, and starting to understand that the problem was really our economy. Um, again, we can talk about this for as long as you'd like. I don't know what your agenda looks like, but I'm gonna go through kind of quickly, and we can backtrack. Um, we ended up developing through a almost two-year process, public process, a regional economic development strategy, a comprehensive economic development strategy for the 27 town and women region. It's a federally recognized process for looking at what are your assets, your opportunities, and your challenges in this 27 town area, and what are your goals, and how are you gonna get there? And really, there's a couple of purposes for doing that. One is that federal funds, when they're coming in, can look and say, oh, there, there's a process that's happened here where people have really understood in a bigger picture way what their assets are, what their challenges are, and they've started to outline a plan, a way forward. And there's folks that are kind of on the same page. This would be probably a safer investment. Um, the other, I say when I go out, is it really helps the rest of the region understand what the challenges are <clears throat> throughout, um, throughout this corner of Vermont and opportunities. So going through that process, we've identified a couple of pretty significant challenges. Some of them, I'm sure that you will um, you will understand. Uh, one of our biggest goals is to act regionally. Um, a lot of our towns feel like you know, everything revolves around Brattleboro, and Brattleboro is our biggest economic hub, but all of our workforce is in the surrounding area. So really, you know, these things go hand in glove. Uh, and also to develop, uh, improve the size and quality of the workforce. So we have a number of manufacturers that Joe is going to talk about really briefly not manufacturers, employers, including manufacturers, that have a lot of good jobs and they're having a hard time filling those jobs. And, you know, I don't know if our kids even are aware of the types of jobs that there are in this region. And so how can we start developing a system around that? So I'm gonna let Jody talk about <clears throat> a couple of projects that we're starting that were outlined in this regional sets. Before she goes, anybody have any questions so far? When you were doing the uh, assessment, yes. How are you doing the assessment? Who are you talking to? So we had. Or who are you listening to? I suppose. Yeah, we had a series of public meetings, focus group meetings. We held them in uh, four regional areas. We went Bellows Falls, Londonderry, Wilmington, and Brattleboro. And again, we had a series of those. We also pulled together different focus groups of different sectors: healthcare, education. Um, some of our employers, a whole host of other ones. And so it was developed that way. And we'll continue, we'll do updates. It says it's good for five years, we do an update every year. Just that kind of, here's where we're at. Any other questions so far? How much is this uh, been created because of Vermont Yankee closing? So, economically? 
this, as I said, when we started back in 2007, mm -hmm. we were looking to expand broadband set and start to understand it was a weak economy. It was really the reason that we didn't have the broadband so there wasn't a good enough market for it, mm -hmm. right? It, was, it wasn't gonna make people money. And so we started outlining goals and objectives, you know, what do we want, how, how much of a population rise we want to do, how much um, do we want to see wages increase, how much regional GDP do we want to increase. Started setting these and starting to think about what's the action plan to get us there and said, oh, well, when Vermont Yankee closes, this problem and actually this problem will actually be double. What we're trying to do right now, we will need to do double. And, uh, we were able to actually, I don't know if you folks must know Stephen Morris up in the West River Valley. He, he chaired uh, the Post VY Task Force, which was really the first time that we had seen an opportunity to have just a conversation about not when it's going to close, not if it should close, not any, you know, if it should stay open, but sometime it's going to close. Next year, in 20 years. And when that happens, what are the impacts going to be and what are we going to need to do? And so that definitely fed into the set. There's a whole section on strategies for mitigating the impacts, but they're very similar to the impacts we're already seeing. We already had a weekend economy. So I know that there is a, a fund that has been mm -hmm. allocated, um, I guess from Vermont Yankee. Yes. Uh, one of the things that I've been reading is that their, the distribution of those funds are having, um, developing some conflict among the different towns. And I just wonder where Jamaica would stand with that kind of, uh, the, the funding of that. I forget how many, I guess several million dollars, isn't it? Ten million dollars um, over five years. Two million, million dollars a year. year. Yeah. Um, I will preface by saying um, I always believe that money is not the problem, it's the plan. So if you have a plan, we're going to figure out how to find funding. I always believe that. Um, with regard to the VY funds, um, the governor and his administration um, were able to secure those funds and they really worked through a process mm -hmm. that they wanted to work through. Um, they've worked with the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation with Adam in particular. Um, to make sure that there's good tie-ins to the regional economic development, but it is state funding now. And so, you know, that process is going through a second um, evaluation. I think they'll be coming out with new criteria soon as to what types of projects they're looking to fund. The governor was very clear that he wanted to fund jobs. Um, and so we're hoping to make sure that's a nice expanded definition. And, you know, as I said, Adam's been working with the administration on that. It's evolving, I think. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> a good word. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. Any other questions? So we have three projects. If we can have five more minutes. Yep. Is that okay? Oh, sure. So I would do the accelerating green building first. Okay. Get those touch. And okay. then the workforce is really the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I came on in January. And I learned an awful lot in a very short amount of time. I didn't know um, all the, the great expanse of work that is happening around trying to accelerate our economy, actually. And, and it's one of the projects I'm going to talk about is an accelerator. Uh, so I, I didn't know what a cluster was uh, in reference to a workforce cluster. So I learned an awful lot about that pretty quickly. So something that we have as an asset in this region that uh, I, I know a few folks who work in this sector is in the green building and services sector. And they're an asset because there's so many of them who are so knowledgeable and seeking to learn the best practices, best products, to test them, to keep meeting together, to keep learning, and to share that. And because of that, there is a lot of opportunity that could be happening around new business opportunities and attracting more people to want to be here because of how exciting and robust that is. One of the things that's happened as a result of these folks coming together, forming an organization so that they can keep learning and growing together is that they were able to submit a successful application for 
being awarded the, the project of putting in the modern wood heating systems in pretty much, is it 20 buildings? Mm -hmm. Is it 20 buildings mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the Wyndham region? Mostly schools, to convert schools that are, that are currently on the oil burning systems to the modern wood heat systems. And, and if, if there's schools that are not quite ready, then they'll move to municipal buildings instead. So with that, they want to see what's next for them. So this group of folks who are, who are doing this amazing research, amazing design, amazing knowledge, what's next for them? What are the opportunities for them? So there is a Green Building and Services cluster study that's going to be happening with some outside folks and the folks who are already here to go, all right, what have we got and where can we go so that we're going to build new businesses that can also create more jobs that are of really high wage or excellent wage <coughs> level. So that's one area. Now just, these are internationally and nationally yeah. known um, businesses that are here. This is why this is kind of a unique asset for the region. Yeah. We have a cluster of really well-known um, folks leading the leading edge of this sector and so we're looking to build off of this okay yeah cool um, so one of the things that uh, that comes out of that is that, well if we need some more businesses how are we going to be able to have those happen in a relatively rapid fashion so that we're not waiting forever so if folks have a really creative idea that they want to test out and see if it's going to fly how can we do that without spending a lot of time and money to find out, yes, that is going to work, or no, that's actually a flop, go back to the drawing board, do something else. And so accelerator programming is something that's been emerging all around the country and all around the world, I think, uh, to help businesses, to help entrepreneurs really figure that out rapidly. So what we're doing is figuring out what kind of resources do we already have in the area that help businesses figure those things out. So financing business planning assistance, loan assistance, other creative design people, research. research, and business mentors, collect all of those folks together who know, have that knowledge and have the, the resource to be able to help new business folks or businesses that are looking to expand into a new idea, and then launch a robust program. And since we have a rebuilding and services sector that are already looking to have new businesses happen, we're thinking that that's going to be the group of folks who are going to likely have people ready to go and, and test their ideas and see are they going to fly or not. And it typically goes for like three months of intensive activity and then by the end of that they get to figure out yes, no, and then move forward. So those are the, those are the yes. Yeah. So the point of doing this is we want to promote and support entrepreneurial activity. Yeah. We want people um, who want to start companies to, to have enough support that you know we take a little bit of the risk away and encourage people to do that. You know, let's how can we figure out if this is a startup by a great idea, if it'll grow new jobs, um, if it'll tie in with the region. So, so somebody wanted to start a job say in Jamaica. Yeah. What what did what somebody have to go what is the process they have to go through? So right now actually what we're doing is developing this system, yeah. okay, for small businesses. Right now, if you have small business, uh, an accelerated system. Right now, if you have a small business in Jamaica, we've got an excellent small business development center um, at the Cotton Mill. Deborah Boudreau, she's really um, incredible working with businesses on business planning and market planning, access to finance, this sort of thing. What we're hoping to do is find really have a program that's both virtual but also accesses, ties into space, potentially a couple of spaces throughout the region where entrepreneurs could come and work with other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and have a lot of tools and support to keep them going. So you want the people, the entrepreneurs to come to you, you're not bringing anything to Jamaica, basically. Well, or as it's developing, we don't have anything to bring in yet with the exception right. of, I mean, well, right now we, we can't, do. I mean, so you, you said a factory. Well, obviously, yeah. there's never going to be a factory again yeah. here in Jamaica. Um, <laughs> it would be nice, but it's very unlikely. Um, it's such a s small town yeah. that it's it's hard. People just pass through. Even now, the stores, you know, have a hard time. 
Um, businesses have a hard time. People just sort of pass through all these small towns and it's, you know, it'd be nice if something could be offered here, but uh, I don't know. So through the flood recovery process, we wrote some grants actually have business assistance come out. And one of the projects that uh, we worked on and that that person who worked on it has since moved on was uh, an expansion because we have seen up the Route 30, um, the West River Valley corridor, that there's not a business cohesion like you would find in say a chamber or any kind of you know robust support networks for businesses. And so he, um, Anthony Summers was his name on a flood recovery officer. He was working with a group of folks, including Elaine, back with here, mm -hmm. on this West River Route 30 uh, community community development group. They ended up doing a marketing project, but they, I also was with them the day that they did a great fan tour. Um, I think we've had a lot of transitional last year. I think we'd like to make sure that we support that kind of grassroots effort as a number of business folk along Route 30. Because it's got to come, we can't tell you what to do, right? So yeah. how do we how do we work with you to figure out what is it that you want, what are the supports that you need, and what are the what what can we provide? And so, I we totally recognize that up through this valley, it's really very limited the connections and supports for businesses. And so this is part of the reason that we're here also, and we'll keep going out is to understand the opportunities. And the other people are really saying, yeah, mm -hmm. they're yeah. moving out. Uh -huh. What are the international and international companies you were talking about? Or? So, Building Green, uh, the Resilient Design, Resilient Design Institute, um, both of those are doing national and international consulting. Okay. Uh, Marlboro College has had some folks through their program that have done national and international consulting. Mm -hmm. There's some other, um, but those, they're known throughout the country. and. The folks that we had done are the SEDS with, the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. Um, they've done a lot of work throughout the country and, and have said to us, you know, this is emerging and there isn't really a center of excellence. You know, so this, in the country, like a place where, you know, there's research going on that they're driving what's happening, they're creating the next thing, they're developing the best practices. And there's a real opportunity for that here. There's a lot of research that's going on because they have a lot of consulting. So do you we think have any on uh, the planning board uh, where actually you are already working with one company where it is developing? Because I, what I hear are a lot of consultants, but I don't hear anything where you're actually saying, okay, this company is starting to uh, excel or expand. Do you so, have any already? Or is it just... Green building companies? Or, or any companies? Can you say that they were... Well, no, any. Any company. Mm -hmm. So, the difference between... Everybody, Joey's going to listen to this sharply. The difference, I would, I would say, between BDCC, this is a million dollar question, and SEVITS, uh, Sevitz has been doing this long-term strategic planning and action plan development in this public process. BDCC is every day working on the ground with businesses. Um, they also have two big incubator type buildings with 130 tents um, that they're running through. Um, they're in Brattleboro, but they are helping businesses outside of Brattleboro. Um, working with companies in, right now, this week, um, up in Bellows Falls, uh, Wilmington, company in Brattleboro. Can you and, name any of those? Uh, there's some big ones right now that are, uh, that have just, that have had a lot of transition or that are, so like Vermed, GS Precision, uh, they're working with these companies to help figure out, you know, strategies for keeping them here, helping them grow. You know, do they have enough workforce? You know, which again is regional. It's an opportunity actually for you know, folks. We have jobs for our folks. They don't have to live right next door to these bigger centers if they don't want to. So we see it as being really applicable to. And this really lends itself to the last piece, which is the 
very high level, high priority project that we're working on, which is workforce. So with the workforce development, one of the, the biggest facets that's a, that's a challenge is that we don't have enough people for the, the amount of jobs that are in fact available in the area. How do we know that? We know that because last fall there was a study done uh, for, it was how many of the employers was it? It was 60? We invited 60 of the yep. largest yeah. employers. And 30 yeah. responded, 35 responded, and they said that over the next five years there would be roughly 3,000 jobs available through either attrition, people retiring, or expansion. And we don't have enough folks in the area to fill all of these jobs. We do have a lot of young people who are leaving, uh, or, or just people who are not staying. Why is that? Part, so part of the, the work we're doing is figuring out exactly why they're leaving and why they might stay. So why young people might stay, what do they need to stay, and what might attract new folks to move into the area so that we can grow a population of folks who are really committed to being here because of what's here. So for the kids who we want to retain, we want to make sure that their educational experiences are informing them of well, what can you do here? What would you like to do? What are your aspirations? What do you feel you're good at? And how might that fit with what's available here? So have you, have you been to any of these companies? Have those employers come and maybe visit? Do you know what your parents do? All of that kind of conversation we're having with schools right now and employers to get a sense of, so how are we conveying to our kids what's here, what might be of interest to them, and how do they get there? What's a pathway to getting to a job at Chroma or getting to a job at Commonwealth Dairy or figuring out even that these places exist or Stratton or, or where, whatever, yeah, wherever they want to go, wherever they want to go. So education. Uh, resources for young professionals because there's a lot of social network, there's a lot of professional network that young professionals really need to have. And then what is a young professional? Anyone who's, I don't know, 18 to 44-ish, somewhere in there, who is professionally working in any field. They also, since they are especially wanted and needed, so they they can grow families, they can buy the houses, they can be in these positions that are available. We want to make sure that they have supports socially and professionally. So we have a, a young professional coordinator who's developing some robust programming around the region, not just in Broward, not just in Ellis Wells. Right. And, then, and then we also have internship programming. Paid. Paid, yes, they're paid. <laughs> Um, so that's developing communications between employers and the six colleges that we have in the region. And, and eventually expanding to talk with more of the high schools and middle schools as well as, as there's thinking about, well, how do we, again, reach out at the, the earlier stages for kids to have really great engaged learning experiences with the employers and organizations that are in the area. And those are, those are really the, the biggest pieces, and then also just communicating with all the folks who have a role to play in all of those different areas. So letting them know, here's all the things that are going on that need to reinforce each other so that we, we are reinforcing each other and that we're in communication. We have one other piece, which in terms of recruitment, a lot of our recruitment, so Jody said retain and recruit, so a lot of our recruitment projects are very similar, making sure we have robust young professionals networks, internship programs good connections into the schools. Um, we also have a Southern Vermont Sustainable Marketing and Recruitment Project that was also done as part of our um, flood recovery work that was with Wyndham and Bennington. And that really came out of a lot of our employers saying, we've got highly specialized positions and it is incredibly difficult for us to recruit some, you know, somebody to come to Brattleboro um, because they don't know where their spouse is gonna work. And th if that job doesn't work out, there may not be any place else for them to go. However, the premise that if we're recruiting for Brattleboro and also can see jobs in Manchester and Stratton and we see these towns that we might want to live in, these school opportunities, if we've got a little bit bigger picture in recruiting, this could be maybe a little bit more helpful. Uh, we could be a little bit more effective. And maybe if we join forces instead of each trying so hard on these recruitment efforts, we could be a little bit more effective. 
And that um, actually got a little boost. This legislative session, I'll shift. Right? I'm also a legislator. I put my legislator hat on for just a moment. Your representative, Oliver Olson, and myself, Kaya Morris from Bennington, got past the Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone, which is Wyndham and Bennington counties. They're going to be producing um, an action report for the legislature uh, and the administration on how do we implement that project, the Southern Vermont Sustainable Marketing Project? How do we expand the existing workforce pro programs that we have at Wyndham and Bennington? The Young Professionals programs. And so <clears throat> that's something that will be getting another boost um, led by private sector. We expect um, some folks from up in the West River Valley will also be a part of that. So, legislators have a statement of uh, <laughs> 3,000 jobs within what, how many years was it? Five. 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 30, what, it's only 30 employers. We went to the tourism sector as well. I was going to say, where are these jobs? Where are these jobs? I mean, so, so many people are unemployed yes. now. Um, right. If and there's that many jobs, I know th there's not 3,000, but you said there's a lot of places that they're looking for mm -hmm. qualified people, and yeah. there's so many people. You look out in the streets, there's so many people that are unemployed. Right. Why? We, we don't have a broken system here. So okay. it, this is exactly, it's a good question to ask. How can it be that we have an employer that is may cancel a critical class that they're trying to hold a training class that people that graduate will end up with high paying jobs, like good paying secure jobs, you know, their lifetime jobs, you move up in the company, because there's not enough interest in taking these training classes. So we're saying, okay, the communication network is not working, A, and B, and both ways. So we haven't even actually, you know, been formally asked, like, help us find these folks. You know, and we don't have a network to come out and say, hey, Jamaica, <laughs> can you, we're looking for folks. How do we, how do we get the word out to your, to your people that these opportunities are here? So it's a broken system that we're trying to rebuild and create a regional workforce development. <clears throat> you said that you were, you mentioned earlier, working within the school systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would seem to me from, and I'm an outsider for all practical purposes, that the individuals who are in the school system are your target. If they're already here, they have roots here, they know what's in the area, but if they are looking elsewhere to make anything that resembles a real living, mm -hmm. uh, there's your target audience. Mm -hmm. you know, we're sitting here saying, well, yeah, it's a shame we can gnash our teeth and write our fingers, but mm -hmm. if we don't get the 16, 17, 18 year old kids pointed in a direction other than away, well, salaries. Salaries. That's, yeah. salaries are really a major issue and also when you look at, you're looking at service uh, sector and many of our server uh, sectors are actually are part-time. Stratton, yeah, hires a lot of people but they hire them between October and November until March or May and so people can't really yeah. uh, get anywhere because it's all temporary. And most of our people, at least that I'm aware of, in order to have a decent living in this part of the world, is they have to have what I call a basket full of different jobs. Uh, some of them are caretaking and other are doing this uh, and that and putting it all together. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a major, major problem, I think in not having people wanting to stay where they can go down to Boston or New York or Connecticut and get a job that will pay. So I live in the Deerfield Valley mm -hmm. and I worked in the hospitality sector for 20 yeah. years. So I exactly, exactly what understand what you're talking about. about. Yeah, um, but I also actually, I was able to support my family working in the hospitality industry. So I think there's, you know, I think there are opportunities. I think our resort section on the Western side would like to help us figure out long-term strategies. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of our school, we met with Leland and Gray today for the third time, mm -hmm. I think. Um, they've got a great after-school um, person who's really engaged. She's kind of at the cusp of all, you know, what we're trying to build regionally in terms of exposing kids to the opportunities that there are, and is really looking to get right up in front of it and make sure that that's happening. So the, the frustrating thing is it takes time to build this stuff. But we want you to know we're doing it. We want input. We need to understand what your challenges are. You know, and if, if you think we're off base and need to be heading someplace else, it's good for us to know. So it would be nice to have young people stay and have good yeah. jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
That's the big thing. Mm -hmm. And the housing is very expensive yeah, too. That's exactly right. And uh, uh, I think the statistic is correct, but it could be off a little bit. I think Leland and Gray only has like 53 percent of its uh, graduating class going to uh, secondary or higher education. That's a Vermont. Vermont. Oh, that's in the it Vermont. May, Leland, that may be Leland and Gray. Yeah. That's a Vermont phenomenon. And that's really well. I know New Jersey. You can't compare Vermont New Jersey, but theirs is like 98 percent. I just went to Leland and Gray graduation. I think it's much higher. But in Vermont, there is, traditionally it has been fairly low. Yeah. Low. So I mean, there that that's one of the things that need to really improve. So where's the question? The ones that didn't go on to secondary education, where did they go? And tapping in where they went may give you a clue. Look at this whole definition of leadership. You get in front of the crowd and say, "Follow me." First, you got to find out which way the crowd's going. And if the crowd is not going in that direction, maybe the, the, the task is to get in front of these guys, so that's where they're going, follow me for a while, and then you lead them astray from their path, maybe, but nonetheless, find out where they're going. Now, I can think of a couple of kids that I know that have gone through the system since I've been here, and they, they got themselves a tractor, they got themselves a mower, and they're out there working. You know, these are the kids who have got an, an interest in working at all. So they've got their little jobs, and they're like 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, they've got a truck, they got more. They're set for life. Maybe not, but it looks like it. When you think in terms of the predominance, as you mentioned, of the different kinds of, everybody has wears two or three hats. Yeah, but you know our kids don't even. I, my my kids go to Twin Bell, and you know I know that they were not exposed and aware of the opportunities, just the opportunities for stable year-round employment. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that are in the region, and also the supports that actually are already available if they want to start a business or kind of explore that. So those are all areas that we are trying to trying to rapidly build up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question that I'm sure I'm gonna hear from a lot, negative, but that's my lot in life. <clears throat> when you talk to the high schools in the area, Leland Gray, for example, and the what percentage of their students are taking art and theater and let's just say throwing trips to China versus learning about available opportunities locally that are more practical, that have got a pretty much a longer shelf life than you dream of being on Broadway? So I will tell you, um, I don't know that we have that percentage number for you. Something to ask. Yeah, we've okay. been to all the schools and we've asked about what the career awareness programs are, okay? And so that we could give to you and, and, but I want to give you a little reassurance, which is part of the, we were just looking at these today, it's not, it's the part of um, uh, educational quality standards for the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. Really require you to be looking at financial literacy, interviewing, you know, how are you in the community? Comp competency based. Yeah. So I think there's a recognition that it would be great to get those skills. Um, so the question I would have, in the interrupt, go ahead. cutting to the chase, a recognition on whose part? Who I recognizes mean, this? The parents, the students, the teachers, the educators, the people who are writing checks. Who's, who's recognizing this? Uh, I think the educational community mm -hmm. um, in the state, um, maybe nationally, saying, okay, we're going to make sure kids have the tools to survive out there. I have to take you to task uh -oh. that. <laughs> because uh, I think art and music, not, not just that, but math and science, etc., it is a very important educational process. You and I agree on that. <laughs> okay. My concern, though, is that that's the primary focus, that if, if you look at the kids and you say, uh, do you know how to write a check? And the answer is no, but I can name 15 or 20 singers that I'd like to emulate. Do you know what the word emulate means? I mean, we're, we're really looking at the, the roots, the arts. She and I both share some background, but the arts and the sciences shouldn't have to be in competition. They should be balanced in some way. And there's a concern that perhaps the kids in, in the school area aren't seeing that. Well, they so, used to have that in Leland Gray. I think you probably took senior survival. 
See, that's not a great question. Senior survivor, Charlie Marchant. He uh, he taught it, and uh, you had to do it. Had to do it, and it was going out in the, going out in the real world. You know, not to digress. I didn't do it, but you did. Not to digress and off that subject, but I think there is opportunity here in Stratton, in the resorts, and just to name it. There is year-round employment in Stratton. I know regular guys who have started in the cafeteria or on lifts who went way up the ladder and just, you know, worked real hard and were recognized for it. And so, you know, to encourage someone to, oh, you'll just go to Stratton and load lifts, and, you know, this, that job's going to be terrible and, and, and they don't understand that or, or Those jobs aren't encouraged that, you know, that may parlay into a really, really good job. Those jobs are limited too. You know, it'd be nice if... But that's how you get in. Right, I know, but, you know. I think I would just leave you with what I hope is some reassurance. I feel like, having been working on this since 2008, and I mean, it's hard to, you know, get out to all of these towns and really start building this, you know, we, the beauty of Vermont is the individual, you know, and so I don't need to come out. But mm -hmm. It feels like there really is a sense of shared urgency. Um, and awareness throughout the region, which I think is actually excellent. Um, it feels like, you know, we're getting more and more folks saying, yeah, we kind of all feel like we've got to do something about improving the size and quality of the workforce. You know, that may mean something different to, you know, whomever you're talking to, but in general, we kind of all feel like, mm, yeah, we probably should go in that direction. You know, make sure we've got the strong jobs, so. And the educators are really interested in learning more about what they can do. Yeah. Yeah. The I mean, schools are hard to get into, actually. I, I, I've been on a school board for 12 years. You know, I mean, school communities, forget it. Do you know what I mean? That can be really hard to break in. We've had nothing but cooperation from most of the education. And excitement. They're excited. We've taken up a lot of your time. So, and we'll sit as long as you want to. Yeah. So, thank you. We've shared you with us in our dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Did you give a card? It's not yet. Okay. Are you available to talk about planning, please? We're, we are resources. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we will come. We will talk. We can help. You know, with, when we, I heard you say you're getting ready to do your regional plan. I know all the regional plans need to have an economic development piece. We'd love to talk to you about how Jamaica, you know, ties into the region's economic development piece. How does that translate here? We're going to work with you. And we'd love to, if we can, get on your distribution list. Oh, sure. agenda took me a while yes. <laughs> to send it to me. What I do, I remember what I want to do that. What we didn't uh, talk about is the aging population. Mm -hmm. And that's a major issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially this board. Yeah, especially on this board. I mean, Andy is really. He's our kid. <laughs> There's a lot of presentations that we've done throughout this process, actually. If folks want to look on the web, Sevens has a lot of presentations on the web that have done, and that's www.sevedscom You can, you know, go through. We have a few Sevens after. programs on BCTV. Yes. <laughs> yes. This one in March. Yes. Pitch night. Oh, look, we're doing dual work. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> tip, tip, tip. people in Jamaica might have seen these pitch night and say, "Oh, hey, there's a new business that's making a pitch. I yeah. would like to do that." So even though it's centered in Brattleboro, this is coming all the way to Jamaica. Okay, we will put you on, we'll send you the agenda, and then I'll send you the contact to contact our planning commission. Great. The chairman, so that you could make arrangements maybe to come to one of the meetings. Sure, absolutely. Right. And we will, you know, if you want us to come up and do presentations or talk with you or whatever, we will. Well, we do thank you very much. And, okay. and we're going to stop keep in. Our young people here. It's not going to happen tomorrow. I'm just tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and now I'm going to skip to Brattleboro Community Television because I inadvertently forgot to put them on our agenda, which Cor had asked me quite some time ago, and I misplaced my little note. So, everybody want to do a big stretch first? <laughs> <laughs>
All right, well, I'm going to keep this extremely lively. So that, uh, um, my name is Cor Trowbridge, I'm the Executive Director of BCTV, Battle Road Community TV. And this is Wendy Mason, who is the Chair of our Board of Directors. And um, go ahead and tell a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, as you said, I'm Wendy Mason. Um, I actually started uh, working as a volunteer with BCTV a number of years ago. Um, various capacities, camera person in some cases, uh, directing, etc. And so then a few years ago, I got involved with the board, and this year I've taken the role of chair. So I'm um, thank you so much for having us here today to talk about uh, BCTV. Great, and I also want to acknowledge the man behind the camera, Rich Melanson. Who do you know? He is our kid. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Everyone else knows you, and you're of course all very familiar to me because I watch you all the time in my office. Um, <laughs> The reason that I'm here today is that uh, we're going through a strategic planning process that we normally do every five to six years in conjunction with our contract renewals that we do with our cable providers, Comcast and Southern Vermont Cable. Um, and uh, of course, Jamaica's on Southern Vermont Cable and you have about roughly 400 subscriber households here in the town. And the way that BCTV is funded is uh, through a small percentage of those cable subscriber fees. So there's about 6,000 households in the Comcast area, Brattle, Melbourne, and Guilford, and then about 2,000 households in Putney, Dumberston, Jamaica, Towns, and Newfin. And that funds our organization. And BCTV is basically the public benefit that you get for allowing cable to go through your town and use your public rights of way. And the public benefit that you get is um, we cover municipal meetings, town meetings, sort of things of general interest, um, and also um, educational uh, programming from the Leland and Gray and Battle Union High School. But also public access is a free speech um, vehicle where anybody who wants to make a program to tell their neighbors about anything, could be sevets, could be, <laughs> Um, just a, a video that somebody made in a class um, can put that on. And it's my job. I don't make an editorial decision about this is going to go on and not this. It's my job to make sure everybody has equal access to the channel. So, sort of a, it's a little different than just commercial television. It's not commercial television. <laughs> um, what we do for Jamaica is we cover these meetings. And um, we also cover town meetings, and we also cover Leland and Gray graduation, which we did on Saturday, very nice ceremony. And um, we are looking ahead to what else we can be doing. We're a small organization, and we work partner with partnerships. We, we do d different things every year, and we just want to keep things fresh. And that's why we're reaching out to you today, just get some feedback. Um, Right now, what we do, I'm just going to show you a little bit on the website. This is brownborotv.org, so it's not BCTV because that was already taken <laughs> when we launched this website a year ago. Um, your, your, your meetings have been online for three years, and we've tried to make it really easy to find by just under this, um, we've sort of divided this into the two different uses that people either watch or they use BCTV to get their message out which means make programming, but if you go down here to meetings, you can see that the Jamaica Select Board has its own tab right here. When you click on that, and it's of course not wanting to work now that I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm going up here where I've already logged in. Thank you. Okay, so, um, so then you have your page here, which is the Jamaica Select Board. And this link, what is your website now? Do you have a town website? No, we don't. We have to uh, you have to take it down. Take it down right. due to the. Uh, okay. So if you had a website or a listserv or something like that, if you just send around this link, bradbrotv.org/slash Jamaica Select Board, right? This page would always display the most recent meeting first, and then all the other meetings are available below. Mm -hmm. You see that? So all of your meetings are online for the last three years, and, and you can see it goes on page after page after page of these meetings. Something that we've started to do when you go to the actual meeting, and hopefully it's going to do something now because it is attached to the internet. 
um, is maybe it just got out of the wireless. It's okay. There it is. Okay. It's going. Okay. I was just thinking. It's thinking. Okay. If you go into this show here, um, we are starting. Rich is taking notes on when you are talking about different things on your agenda. And he's putting the time code up here <coughs> so that you can go and find out, you know, exactly somebody who wants to just look at one agenda item can go to that time, mm -hmm. scroll through to that. Um, and so that makes it a little bit more useful for you. Also, that's all searchable. So if you're looking on the internet and you're saying Jamaica, Vermont, um, Coda and Coda fuel contacts or something like that, or whatever, <laughs> something that this says, um, or lister position, this would come up in your search. Mm -hmm. And so you, and you'll see on the other meetings that um, they have the same thing. So if you're wanting to kind of go back through and say, what do we do about this agenda item past few meetings, you could scroll through and look at these description. This, 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 this show page is also meant to be as useful a resource as you want it to be. Here you can see all we have is the production date, but this could have a link to a website resources about a program. Maybe, you know, like Seveds makes a presentation. We could put the link to the Seveds website on there. So if townspeople come to this page, they want to know what happened at the meeting, but they want to know what's that website, it would be right there. The other thing you can upload is documents. So if you had like a draft town plan or something like that, um, that you want people to be able to access and you don't have a website. In some ways you can use this as a mini website by, by posting documents related to the meeting on this page. Is that, everybody following that? Yeah, I, I have one more. Yeah. Yay. Yay, that sounded very positive. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, I don't want to get too much into the technical weeds, but just for those of you who are technically minded, this is hosted tech on YouTube. You can see that familiar red arrow there. So this is a YouTube video embedded in our website where we're, we control what's on the page and you're seeing all things about the Jamaica Select Board. But if somebody's watching videos on YouTube and they type in Jamaica Select Board, this video is there. Mm -hmm. This is going to come up. So we're trying to do that because we want to put the videos where people are looking for videos. This is our opportunity to give you a resource that you can make as valuable as you want by posting things. That's different than YouTube, but you can see. So it's a dual kind of um, website presence. And the way you get that YouTube link, just so you know, is this wishbone symbol up here. See that share symbol? And you click on that. And there's the, your, your, the YouTube link for that video. Mm -hmm. So you can, if you wanted to like post it on Facebook, you could post the link to this page. You could also post the YouTube link to the video if you prefer. It's the same video. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, <coughs> the way that we get the schedule out is we have the schedule online here. We have an online TV guide, and that is uh, something that is um, updated once a week. We schedule a week ahead, so people can always come here to the website. Um, sorry, again, loading kind of slowly for that, but we also publish it in the Reformer on Tuesdays and Saturdays and in the comments. It's in the comments. And also available on our BCTV Facebook page. That's right. Um, so here, if you come to this schedule for today. Let's scroll down to, oh, the Jamaica Select Board played at noon. Okay, right here. <laughs> and you can see that not only can you see what time it's playing on channel 10, but you can also click on it to watch it online, mm -hmm. right there. So you can click on through. So again, we're trying to make it so that no matter how you're coming at the information on the site and looking for your meeting, you find it very quickly because the more clicks you would make a person do, the less likely they are to click it. So <laughs> um, that's just human nature, it turns out. Um, we 
play out this meeting um, the first Thursday night after the meeting. So tonight's meeting, we always play in a prime time slot, which we consider around 6.30 at night, the first, meet, the first Thursday after the meeting. So that's some great information to get out to the public here. Um, if you wanted to post that somewhere, because um, people often ask, when is this going to be on? Oh, I don't have a computer, I'm not online, or whatever, you know. Um, but that's just something you can rely on. So for every meeting that we do, we've given a prime time play out of a certain time, and it's usually, we're, it's usually online before that. We go home from this meeting, Rich edits your <laughs> meeting, he adds the names of people who are speaking, he adds your names, he adds all this information about the agenda items, and then we upload it. Just if you wonder what was going on behind the scenes. Um, there also is a DVD purchase off option here. We aren't, weren't able to, I wonder why that's not happening. <laughs> Here we go. So if you're going to a show and you want to get a DVD, there's the option to order a copy here. So if you guys wanted to purchase a DVD to have as an archive copy for yourself, we can also give you a municipal rate on that. And, and uh, we find that graduations are sometimes really good to, mm -hmm. to have on DVD. Mm -hmm. the parents can request or grandparents, whoever can request online to, to have that made if they want to keep that for keepsake. The next thing I want to do is just play a quick video that shows you what's on TV now. What's on BCTV now. Everything is not happy with me today. And, um, and this is basically to just give a flavor of what else you can find on BCTV. We have two state, we have two channels, channel eight and channel ten. So there's a lot of programming that we offer to people uh, to watch besides the municipal bill on uh, meetings, for example. So uh, and some of it's. This is BCTV, Cobra's own bag access TV station, the first of its kind in the state of Vermont, and the facility behind the Comcast cable channels eight and ten, our government and education sister channel. From recordings of area events like lectures and readings from places like Brooks Memorial Library to music, dance, and other art performances out in the community. To the station's robust municipal coverage in every one of the towns we serve. See, technically, BCTV serves a lot more than just Brattleboro, as our camera operators each week document meetings in Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. It's just that VGDP NTJ BCTV is a little less catchy than just BCTV. And town meetings are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the municipal coverage available on BCTV. Now there's town and high school board meetings, planning commission, development review board, and a whole lot more to choose from when it comes to keeping up with the inner workings of your town. Now, Channel 10 alone boasted a wide range of other programming this year, including the ever-popular morning news advisory broadcast from the high school, BUHS-TV, along with Wyndham 4 rep Mike Merwicki's own statehouse program, Montpelier Connection, which transmits via Ustream during the legislative session, bringing it back to the studio in the off-season. And when you move on over to Channel 8, there's a whole lot more programming to talk about. Here's the Landmark College Broadcast Journalism class putting to work their three-week winter intensive by producing not one, but six different half-hour evening news programs. And then, of course, there's the absolutely brilliant youngsters behind our annual summer camp. And there's plenty of other BCTV classics living within the folds of the Channel 8 Weekly Programming Guide. Like our news roundup, 545 Live. Or here's WTSA News Director Tim Johnson hosting another BCTV Open Studio interview. 
And for some of the area's biggest events, like Strolling of the Heifers, we go all out at BCTV. Here we are on Stroll Weekend 2014, hooking up once again all four of our HD studio cameras after transporting just about every piece of equipment we own down the block to broadcast live from the River Garden. Here we are at BUHS Graduation 2014, getting ready to broadcast our coverage live in HD. Fast forward just a few short hours later, and we're setting it all up again in Townsend for Leland and Gray's Saturday morning graduation exercises. Here's the world-renowned Temple Grandin speaking at Landmark College, a BCTV production that generated over a thousand views in its first weekend up. So from 30 seconds to 9 straight hours, BCTV's channels provide an avenue for content that's unbound by the formula of network TV. feedback about how you would like to use BCTV more. And um, one improvement we would like to see um, as we talk with the cable providers is that right now, unlike other channels, we don't have a high definition channel. Like right now, a lot of people have these fancy flat screen TVs, becoming just more and more just regular TV. And um, we don't, our, our channel is in standard definition. So it looks less, you know, the way it's supposed to on this thing. Um, the other thing is that when you go to the cable guide, uh, and you know what I mean by that, where people, where you're looking for the channels on cable, for all these other channels, they are, uh, you can see which, you know, the views here, News 9, Sesame Street here, but our channels don't have, you can't click on the actual show. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, um, means that people can't go and record mm -hmm. the show using their remote like they do for other shows. They also can't get information about what is the show, right? So you'll notice that for a lot of those programs that you saw in the video, we're putting um, information on the channel about what are you watching? You're watching the Jamaica Select Board, how do you know that? Because it says Jamaica Select Board the whole time, right? Um, whereas some of these other shows, you don't, they don't do that because you can just say, push the guide button and say, what am I watching, right? Um, there's also a lot of other information that goes with that guide. But, so for looking ahead strategically for our organization, those are two important, we feel, ways of making sure that this channel which has so much local value, um, can be found and watched um, just as well as another channel. Um, but we are really interested to hear from you what else you would be interested in having us do. I, uh, we, I have met with BDCC and Sevens, and they're really interested in getting some more of their information on BCTV so that people like in these towns, can find out more about them as a resource. So if, if there's any comments or suggestions that you have. Well, the other thing I've got to come in is I hear from the community. There are people in this town who rely on you guys to see what's going on here. Now, whether they're watching it on TV or the computer, how they get to it. Right. But it's working. Wonderful. You know, they're definitely seeing what's happening here uh, through you guys. Mm -hmm. And that's without having a website, a town website, where you've got the link posted. Yeah. They must have found it. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot more people watch it than we think they do. I mean, I, I'm a little surprised at you know, how often someone comments on seeing someone on slide board meeting. Yeah, no, no matter people. what town you're in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have heard that from other boards as well, and, I, and that's why one of the reasons this is such a perfect resource for this area, because I think um, Vermont in general, people are just that much more connected to community, uh, local community involvement in, in 
government and a lot of different things because, well, we have a select board, we don't have a mayor, like everything is much more directly affecting them. So I, I, it doesn't actually surprise me to hear that uh, you, you get these comments. And, and uh, the providers are saying, what did you say, Comcast and? So the Vermont Cable. So the, the smallest package of cable. Ba basic are you, cable. Are, we are on basic cable. On both, on, on Comcast and BC. Yes, we're required. That's a requirement. Okay. That's, that's by, just by law. We are in a situation where we're too far in. We are two miles in from Route 30. Yeah. It. So consequently, it does not go in our way. Uh, I did not know until you started to talk and looking at the sheet that it, you can get it online. Yeah. How, how does that information get put out? Because I, I you know, I have never heard that before. It, do you advertise that? Well, how in our, it get out good, to the great question. We, in our weekly add in the commons and also in reformer it you know on the schedule it says here's our website go to the website for more uh to find out more of the most up-to-date programming or to find out more um outreach is something that um we need to do more and we we hear that um yeah, you know it's funny you say the commons and people can get the commons by going and picking it up Yes. But everybody gets the message in their mailbox and gets right. delivered to them. We don't get that. I'm wondering if you might think about, from, from our perspective, and everybody and gets the message. The message. Okay. And uh, does the news guide come? Yeah, the news guide comes down, but I think just about as far as Jamaica, because I advertise in that. Okay, so the, the message goes guide. to, okay, yeah. Vermont news guide. Um, the message goes to what towns? Does that go to the news? It's out of Springfield, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chester. But is it out of Chester? Uh, somewhere in that area. Right. But for some years, it gets delivered to every one of our post, post office boxes. Yeah. Okay. Most of the news seems to be from those guys, but at least it is coming to our box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a, t a resource, a web resource that Jamaica people go to where it would be a good place to post that link to the select board meeting page? Well, you can see a Facebook page. Use the, the Facebook, use the Facebook page. Jamaica, Facebook 05343. Yes, so I have, I, I am friends with Jamaica on Facebook, <laughs> but. Um, no, we didn't reject you. You didn't reject me. <laughs> but I don't think that if I post something to your page, oh, okay. it's still kind of hard for people to see, see unless you post it. Oh. And you can share it right from our page too when our when we put it up on our page on Facebook. But if there was somebody I could email the link to, if they would post to your page. Do you know who manages that page? Karen and Yeah, the store. Karen at the store? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I know her. I think she takes care of that, doesn't she? There's I think she does. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Oh, Glitch. Lisa, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Lisa, 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 who? Lich, 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 right? T C H F I E L P. Okay. Uh, I can reach out to them because sure for a lot of towns, we just we send whoever's maintaining the website the link, and uh, you know then they are posting it. However, they and then you know it's all right there. Or Leland and Gray board meetings, they post it on their website. So um, the more eyeballs we get on this, the more of a resource it is. Mm -hmm. And um, the more it's shared amongst local people, you know, the farther it's going to go. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's a good way of doing it. And um, we are going to be, one thing people have asked us is more um, high school sports, some stuff like that. So we're going to be meeting with the high school to kind of see how that might be something that we could take a look at. And we're just collecting ideas, basically. There's more stuff out there. It's just <laughs> All right. Well, thanks Thank again you. for your time. Thank really you appreciate so it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to let you get back. Just love to collect those surveys while you're here. I didn't get to do mine. Can I move? Yes. Or you can give it to Rich.
at the end of the meeting? Oh, okay, that's okay. what I'll do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just ignore us all in. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next on the agenda is a, it's a revision with the corrected address for um, the old R&D Sunoco. And this is for our information. Yeah. And number seven is we have our contract for Animal Holding Linden County Humane Society in the town of Jamaica. Um, and it gives us all the information, you know, who's responsible for what, uh, town's responsibilities, in the county, legal impoundment, and all, you know, constable will get a copy of it. What is your pleasure on that? What's the cost of it? Is there a cost of it? Yes, there is. It's, uh, I'm sorry, let me see. Uh, well, if the town shall pay Wyndham County to make a flat fee of two fifty to serve as the impoundment facility for the town to satisfy. So it's a one time fee. That's not part of our uh, our town budget. You know, we have that community service area. We're not on that part of our budget. Because it's the only place we, we can. A motion for this? Yes, case? we do. Because it needs our signature. I make a motion we accept the contract for animal holding from. Wendell County. Uh, Wendell County Humane Society. Mm -hmm. For a fee of $250. Well, no, that's, that's, we're not going to pay a fee. No, per dog, though. Well, per dog, so, but just that the contract. Okay, I make a motion. That we accept the contract for animal holding from the Wyndham, uh, Wyndham County Humane Society for Jamaica. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. Aye. All right. Uh, number eight, we received 
Notice from the State of Vermont Forest Parks and Recreation, um, <coughs> land that's managed by the Agency of Natural Resources in our town in 2014-15. Um, and it, it explains that well, there was only two things what they were going to do, or three things, like natural area expansion, um, expand the boundaries of Hamilton Falls natural area, and I believe the uh, planning commission was working on that. They had a meeting, a public meeting on that. Timber inventory, prepare data for updated management plan, and West River Trail, um, plow parking area, provide winter access, which they do. And if we have any um, comments, we can notify them. process they use is a rather subjective process and that if he sees a board uh, actively reaching out to do things then that is that triggers that subjective process to uh, to lower the uh, cost of our insurance oh. so uh, I think uh, we may benefit financially mm. as well that's nice you talked a little bit about workman's comp and how, how uh, Different things will affect our rates, so uh, that was very, very useful uh, information as well. So. so if he comes, you all have to act lively to impress him. Pardon? If he comes, you all have to act lively to impress him. <laughs> we have to look like we're really interested. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were all there. Yeah, that's a big part of our budget too, the insurance. Yeah. <coughs> Do you have anything else here? No. That's it. Judy? Uh, actually, I do for Lou. Uh, to give uh, the board an update on the transfer station surveillance uh, <laughs> kind well, of situation. Yeah, I went to, uh, as, as you may know, uh, Chris Clark installed uh, uh, two cameras at the transfer station. Yeah. How much are we going to put over the air of your security system? At this time, uh, this no, brings us out. It, it's where? a security system. Uh, Nothing personal, folks. How much do we broadcast about our security system? I think it's a good idea to let people know that we have a security system. Yeah. Ever since we started talking about it, nobody's, nobody's bothered the transfer station. Except for bears. Bears. We have to get more bears watching us. They don't listen. Uh, I, actually, I'll interrupt. I, I'm going to be talking about a Wilmington transfer regulation uh, and has a big notice on the bottom. Notice this site is being monitored. <laughs> Violators will be pros prosecuted. So, Good. <laughs> so go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, 
Cameras are useless unless they can record their information someplace, and that gets recorded on the DVR. Uh, I tested that DVR in-house in here without cameras, and that all works. Brought it to the transfer station and looked around and found the cables that came in from the uh, cameras, but I could not find the power cord. And uh, I said, Mark, where's the power cord, power supply for the cameras? He said, I don't know. I looked around, couldn't find it. He says, I bet that got thrown away when we cleaned the... Uh, oh, dear. So I ordered a new, uh, new power cable, and uh, that'll come in probably sometime this week or early next week. Then was the first time you went up, I was there and the power was out. Yes. Yeah, I went up to do it Monday and the power was right. out. I, I, I got up there too to find that out. Yeah, I'll be back the next day or Wednesday. So, so things are moving along. So, uh, anyway, that's the status. Yes. <laughs> um, I have been blessed, meaning given the task of looking at the uh, uh, ordinance for the transfer station, and the more I read it, the more I saw that there basically has to be a very complete overhaul because there are many things that are missing with the Act 148 in terms of definitions and uh, looking at mandatory recycling, etc. So uh, it's not going to be done quickly uh, because it's going to take time to look at, and then I'm. I'll give you guys a copy when I have finished uh, working on it. However, in the process uh, of looking at that, uh, I remember that we, uh, the transfer station is supposed to give uh, uh, Wyndham Solid Waste their regulations, but our regulations for the new plan by July 1st. So I happened to be in Brattleboro all day today, and I ran into a Wyndham Solid Waste, and fortunately, I got a copy of a Wilmington's transfer station regulations, and uh, it's very interesting, and I can use this as a model. However, the piece came up that I think is something that we need to talk about because I can't include it if. Uh, we don't discuss it tonight because I have to get this in by July 1st. And that is um, one of the things that they do is uh, with a permit, if people, remember bags are on sale with Jamaica written on it. And what Wilmington is requiring is that you show your permit just like us to be able to deposit uh, their bags in their transfer station. But if a person does not show up with their permit, they're charging $4. And um, one of the things, uh, vehicles without a permit, uh, there's a surcharge of $4 per visit. So uh, with other towns perhaps starting to use Jamaica bags, which can happen, do we need to have that policy where we charge people, or can somebody, let's say, from Wyndham, and I know we have discussed this very issue and kind of looked at it as not really counting, but when I saw that Wilmington was beginning to look at that, because we, even though they may be buying our bags, we still have money paying for uh, hauling uh, the compactor down to uh, Wyndham Solid Waste. So them paying two or three dollars for bags actually is not the full cost of what what the town would be paying for. So, uh, what it says right here is vehicles without permits, uh, $4 surcharge. And then, of course, if they have the permit, which we show anyway, then they don't have to pay that. So, uh, I don't know if I'm making this clear or you have more questions, but uh, I would like to have us discuss whether you want to 
include that into our regulations that has to be sent in by July 1st. So this is a four dollar surcharge above the cost of the bag? Yes. And yeah. it's if they don't have that card. Card, not a permit, the card. No, it's white card. Yeah, that's a permit. Right. Okay, that's but then, just so we're on TV, a card. A card, yes, card. it's the card. Transfer station yeah. card. Card, exactly. I, I, I can't. Let's go back. I'm not sure I understand completely, but if someone buys our bag, mm -hmm. they bought the, they bought, they're paying for the, the service. Now, I like the idea of having the, the card, but if they pay for the bag, they've paid for the service. They, they really pay? haven't paid for the total service. Yeah. Because we still, in our budget, have to pay for um, the attendant, we have to pay for electricity, we have to pay for the hauling. Okay. Away, so and that you know we're paying thousands so of dollars. So we're kind of we're reducing the cost, but we're not eliminating the cost. Correct. So if someone shows up who does not have a Jamaica card, card. It, as we do now, they're not allowed to dump, even if they've got a Jamaica bag. Because it would put an added expense on our hauling fee. Yes. And plus, they're Jamaican taxpayers to have that card, right? Everyone yes. should. Yes. yes. But Lewis brought up. We're not a taxpayer, a resident. A resident. Because they can be uh, renters. Oh, okay. But that's even renters. They can come in and get. Uh, well, wasn't it, don't you have a theory that, that the other bags coming in are. Well, that's what we'll Won't be a detriment that. to the. I, didn't, I don't think so, but I don't want to. Well, I just want to uh, refresh my. They're not going to bring in another color bag. It's still going to be a Jamaican bag. No, I don't. The cost of a bag cover should cover, has to cover by law, right. has to cover the cost of disposal, which is the fee we pay for animal salvage, which is $100 a ton, and it has to cover the actual transportation as well. What it does not have to cover is the transfer station attendant. Right. It doesn't have to cover the electricity, as Judy mentioned, or any of those other things. Now, the, the cost of, of the disposal and the transportation is about a dollar and a half, uh, estimated at 25, 25 pounds per bag. If somebody brings in 35 pounds, well then it's probably more like uh, $2 a bag. So if you figure $2 of that bag cover is covering the cost of the d disposal, then the rest of the, then the other, and 25 or 21 cents or so is the cost of actually uh, paying whoever it is to make these bags for us. Uh, you're talking about maybe, and, we're, and we haven't talked about yet how much to pay the uh, people who are selling them, but let's assume that it's some number that the total cost doesn't really cover the cost of our total. It, it, it comes close, but it doesn't cover all the cost. Uh, my thinking, though, is, is that uh, if somebody buys a Jamaica bag, uh, like for example, and uses one of our caretakers, my thinking is that that would be enough to warrant a caretaker for using a bag who's not a Jamaican customer. That's really what, what my, my motivation is, is to, is to make it easier for caretakers so they don't have to go and buy Winhall bags. You know, if they do three different towns, do they have to buy Winhall bags, Jamaica bags, or whatever, and then they have to go to these three different transfer stations. So that was what my motivation for allowing anybody who wanted to buy Jamaica bags. Uh, but, but they have a card or a permit? No. No. Well, the caretaker would, yes. Yes. All right. There's, I'm just putting myself in the place of the transfer station tank. Somebody comes up with no card and they got to pay for it all. Somebody, I just don't want them to have to go through. Why is that guy? Not have a card, and I have to show my card and pay for the tax. Everybody should have to show a card, or everyone should have to buy the tax. Are we, are we are we asking them to do both? We're asking everybody to buy the bag. Yes, I understand that. Yeah, but as far as the card being shown, we're still going to have them show the card. Yes, so we are. I understand. That's what we decided. Some people. Yeah. yeah. I was. I, I, I recommend have a card and have a Jamaica 
Jamaica bag. What was that? Some people may not have a card and they may have a Jamaica bag. Yes. Not yes, that's exactly And then you charge them $4. Yes. That's getting right. a little complicated for me. Well, the, the, the reason I'm not so much in favor of that is because how do you charge the $4? Cash? We don't want well, we that, don't want the that would be the like second. It's a two part, two part uh, okay. situation, and that if we do, how does the four dollars get collected? Uh, is it cash or is it check? They have to call. They have to have the checkbook with them. Well, also that would then discourage people from uh, using the Jamaica uh, transfer station when they're not residents. Are you saying that the Wilmington plan would be okay for us, minus that little blurb about the four dollars for someone without a, a card? Is that what you're asking? To you would like to use that for a, adopt their their plan? I think it's worthwhile that? thinking about because well, we, have, we have to do it pretty soon. Yes, we have to do it tonight unless we have a special meeting before the first. Because it has to be on here. Now, what would yeah. it be, what happens if somebody from out of town came and they had our bags, and then they also had some boards in the back of their truck that they wanted to put in the uh, mm -hmm. demolition or whatever right. they call it? Right. That's they the to, issue I see. They have to pay for it. Right. I thought we weren't letting people who aren't residents of Jamaica do, even though you have to pay for it. I mean. It, I don't know if it's going to open up, the, well, we're going to start all over again and have... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If, if you were to allow people to bring bags in who are not residents, I don't think you want to let them up into that other area. No, but what if they do come and they say to our attendant, oh, I just have this, he'll say, well, that's, you know, yeah. check for $5. Or so. And the poor guy gets in the, you know, what do you do? I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the right thing is and what the wrong, you know. Was the the best for our transfer station attendant? Was the best for us? Right, and, uh, and that's that's, that's why I'm bringing it, bringing it up. We are requiring that they that anybody who comes in has a permit or a card to use. Now, if 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 you feel that it's sufficient, just that they have a card, uh, then let it go. However. I think where the real big issue is what you were talking about is with the caretakers, where we can, uh, some caretaker who serves Wynn Hall and Dover and Wardsboro uh, thinks, oh, I'll just give them all Jamaica cards because I have a Jamaica card. Or I will give them all bags because I have. And what does that do? I think we do that to the cost. Way, right? I mean, well, it happens now. Yeah, we there's a lot of caretakers. It's stuff we're going to get paid for. I mean, we're going to be compensated for it. Oh. By the bag, somewhat. Somewhat, correct. That's correct. I think that if they have a card and they have the Jamaica bag, then that's the way it goes. Because the caretaker has to have their permit, too. I, yeah, and, and that doesn't bother me because we're not losing money. Prior to the cost of the bags, we were losing money. If right. somebody brought in windhaul trash to us, we were paying for it, we were losing money. Right, we were over trash. Well, yeah, I don't agree with that. I think, I think we still are losing money because our taxpayer has to pay that supplement uh, when that would not be the case. We wouldn't have that tonnage that we would have to be uh, But the, but the bag for. covers the tonnage, though. It, yeah, it, yeah, it, but then Lou, what you did was you also contradicted yourself by saying, and which is true, it doesn't pay our insurance, it doesn't pay uh, for the electricity, it doesn't pay for the uh, attendant. So there still is money going out. Yeah, but but our but our, our, our those costs are fixed whether we right. But we still we have to pay. Yeah, we still have to pay. We, we, we didn't raise the bags up high enough to cover the cost no, of, we did of not. the attendant. We knew we, were, we knew we weren't going to be covering the attendant. Correct. We knew there were going to be some other expenses that right. a $3 bag wouldn't yeah. cover. So. 
I mean, would it be to our advantage to let other people with the Jamaica bag come in and dump or not? Well, we won't that know. They have to well, the fixed cost of attendance electricity isn't going to change. It's not going to wax or wane okay. with the body count. Okay. So, right. the more people come in with the green bags, the less percentage of the overall cost is borne by the taxpayer. Right. And one person pointed out that that's really a source of revenue. Not that it's going to be a whole lot of it. No. But it's really but going to pay our, our tipping fees or whatever you call it. Yeah. Right. What, what is our budget? I don't know where that is on our thing. What is our budget? I think it's like $62,000. Well, our total budget is around $120,000. Um, For the transfer station? The transfer station, yeah. Um, I'll tell you what page. Page you call. Okay. Uh, page uh, 14. Yeah. Uh, 109,000. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're still talking big money here, in spite of the fact that um, we have reduced it by $60,000. So, but I'm bringing it up because I don't want to make this decision either no. way on my own, and I think we have to, to do that. I would be for omitting the $4 charge for a couple of reasons. One is how they're going to pay for it. And the other is, I don't, I understand what you mean. We may lose a little, but if they're buying the bag, then we're being compensated for them bringing that from wherever it comes from. I don't see how you can police what's in those bags. No, we're... No, I, I mean, by what, what town they're coming from, whether they come from my truck, for instance, I got Jamaican bags. What if I'm bringing it from West Townsend? Well, I mean, I'm not blaming them. That, that's the issue. But I have in the past. <laughs> well, you know. Oh, what are your customers just from West Townsend? Well, what are they? Yeah, what did I bring it down to Townsend? I didn't do that. You know, if there was a few things from the job, went to my house. That's where my business is. Now, I, I won't be able to do that in good conscience. <laughs> it, it, I, would, I would echo that for different reasons, in that the fixed fees are the fixed fees. The only thing that's going to change, depending on who comes, is the tipping fees, which are compensated for by the green bags. So the lights and the people are the same, we're not changing their hours, we're not turning lights on extra, extra, in the extra time. It's just how much junk that we have to get rid of, and that's covered by the green bags. So it seems to me that, that $4 would be like jump, a pile of lawn. Yeah, I don't think we really need to do that. Do you think we should, it's just a suggestion, maybe see how it goes starting July 1st, see how many people from other towns are coming in. See if it becomes maybe a problem. Maybe they'll see if it becomes a problem. If it becomes a big problem, then we can um, amend our ordinance. Uh, it's just a suggestion, I don't know. Well, there's something to be said about it. I'm only fixing what needs to be fixed right away. But I know we're anticipating some problems, but maybe we're not going to have them. We will, but we can go back and take a look at it. Why well, There's other places they can go. But, you know, I, I never heard what Winhall was charging or what anyone else in our district. I don't, I don't know all those numbers. They may be uh, looking at that same challenge. Excuse me? I think they're, they're charging the same numbers right. as we are. So why wouldn't they go to wherever it's closest anyway? Well, now we're going we're gonna to second guess yeah, ourselves to death here. Yeah. We came up with a plan and we came up with yeah. a fee predicated on X number of tons a year. Oh, I mean, so gas and, the, and electricity is pretty much a fixed one. If somebody wants to come in and go down to Karen's, buy a bag, and take it to our place, they are contributing to the part that they are affecting. And that's the part of the, the tonnage and how much we're moving. They're taking care of that piece of it. But if they don't do it, Linda's still sitting there. So those things are fixed. I'm inclined to stick with the bags. You know, if it becomes a problem, we can come back and fix it later. But we've been talking about this for a long time. We've got people who are pretty much got an idea what's going on. What's that? After we get rid of those, we can. Yeah, we've got to go to Snickers. We're not pointing to you, we're not behind you. Um, Sorry, Rich. Put the hand the camera behind you. So we can talk about that. We don't want people to go to the hand. Yeah. Um, it would seem to me that the, now the question in my mind is whether they have to flash the card or not. Well, they should. They should yeah. still use their card. Yeah. Yeah. If they're from yeah. another that's, town that's and they don't have a card, 
because they might have other things they're going to have to deposit in right. the transfer station. Okay. Right. So, Metal. So we're going to continue to use I the think, card. Yes, we're we're only out. adding the bags. Right. right. That, that's the okay. Same. That's the way it's right. right. That something comes across. So the Wilmington ordinance, if it's convenient for for you, mm -hmm. delete that. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I would either be fine add with it that. or see. I have. I also have to uh, review this and yeah. take out what's not ours and what right. is. And so. We don't want to marry this ordinance, but it's a good template from which to move yeah. forward. Exactly. Right. To you know, he's yeah. the district. Yeah. This this is actually a separate thing from the ordinance, although right. there's a lot of ordinance in here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I still have to do the ordinance, and that I'm, I'll do uh, starting in July when this is done. Okay. Yeah, I think we have some time to take that over. So uh, I I guess will the discussion is I I do we need to take a vote? What do we need we, to do? Can we just no because or just do it by do consensus. You, well, look, we you use your good judgment and you know doctoring that up the way you think that. Okay. I, I would parenthetically add that we've not decided how much we're going to reimburse the people who are doing the actual selling of these bags. And I can bring that up right now. Good. Yeah. This one. Good. Okay, so our consensus is that we are not going to go to uh, charging people who don't have their card for right. throwing. Okay. Right. Yes. All right. Um, it's also been brought to my attention by people here and my own self is that um, we should really be paying uh, these people who are selling for us uh, some compensation. Uh, there have been two numbers that have been tossed around as possibility for each bag that's sold and what would happen be it would be that we would reduce the amount of payment that they would give us when they get the bags, okay? Uh, and the two numbers are, uh, one is five cents per bag and another is 25 cents uh, per bag. The thing that we are discovering is that there's a lot to selling these bags by our two groups. Uh, the, Rossonville Marketplace and DMKs. They're getting a lot of questions, um, and Karen even has the bags out so that people can see. And uh, and I would imagine Rossonville is having the same thing where they're uh, doing a lot of explaining. So it's not just somebody coming up like selling a bottle of water and handing them the money. There's a lot more right at the moment. So I'm very much in favor of compensating these two groups, um, but uh, I don't know how much, the, whether the board would like to do that. I think we have discussed it, that might be a good idea, or how much money uh, you think would be a fair amount. So I would uh, recommend that we, we compensate people businesses at 25 cents a bag. I've seen what Karen's got to do. It takes time for her, it takes away from other customers, she's got all the other things going on. That seems like a reasonable amount. And I don't think that would be a big loss, would you? Well, let me, let me just, I did some math. Okay. Uh, we have, we're estimating we're going to sell 30,000 bags. Now, if we, um, if we assume that we're going to sell a third here at the town offices, Karen's going to sell a third and Ross is going to sell Actually, I think it's uh, they they have the real load. Okay, to but I mean, just to okay. just, just to use numbers, okay. that would be ten thousand bags. For for a thousand bags, twenty five cents a bag is two hundred fifty dollars. So for ten thousand bags, that would be two thousand five hundred dollars. I think that's too much. It is a lot. I didn't realize how much that would. I think ten thousand bags is a lot. It is. I think that when we're asking her to sell these things, that they're, they're going at it, what, 10 a piece or something like that? To buy out the amount of time and hand, she's got to figure it out, yeah. do the math, handle the people, explain what's going on 10,000 times, divide that by 10. Yeah, but I, I, think that, I think that's only going to be the case 
for a short for the time. first month. Yeah. Well, not for the first month. I think it's going to go. And then once the second month. homeowners come in, there'll be another yeah. burst of activity Sunny and trips. <laughs> Right. I think if we're going to lose that much money, and not to sound harsh, because I mean, this is why we're doing it, so we don't lose money. We don't want. Well, yes and no. I mean, there's a certain degree of cost of doing business built into this, and so we're giving up 25 cents per bag for 10,000 bags. How much time and energy are, are the proprietors of these agencies giving up to do this for us? Because the option is for us to do it ourselves. They don't have to do it. That's exactly what I've noticed. No, I'm saying that's an option for them. Yeah. If it becomes a real time consuming, you know, losing proposition, I, if I was a businessman, I would say, I, we can't do this. We're just tying up our registers. I know some and of the then times. another option would be, which isn't going over too good with the board, is we could sell them by check at the transfer station. If we had, I, you know, one of the stores doesn't want any compensation, and then, I mean, we can say five cents, ten cents, but 2,500 bucks, that's a lot for the town meeting that day. I mean, some of the towns are well, selling them in stores, they're having just, yeah, um, exactly. the town, have the to town get office is open. Yeah. Uh, if if, if, if the, the stores sell 20,000 bags, that's $5,000. That, of, that we lose. lose. Yeah. And what do they get? Twenty-five cents times. Well, what do they? What do they take in for that? Well, the five thousand times we lose. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. So that's but I do think they need some compensation. I just yes. think twenty-five cents a bag is too much. Right. right. What would the five cents be? Did you figure that one out? It'd be about five hundred dollars. So ten for cents a year. For a year. If if they sold ten thousand bags. But after six months or so. It's going or maybe, to I forbid, I couldn't believe it would take a year. But people would know the drill, or they would know the routine. Mm -hmm. and maybe what we do is we give them a little extra compensation during this first month. Yeah, that's it a possibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just get, the more complicated we get, the less likely we are going to get compliance, long-term compliance. I'm trying to make this not just. Yeah, but we can't. We can't afford to. I didn't realize. I, I didn't. Well, even I don't know. We can't it. afford it. Think in terms five thousand. That would be for ten thousand. Would be five for each one. Uh, well, just no, twenty-five. Ten thousand bags would. If we had twenty-five cents a bag, it would cost us twenty-five hundred dollars. Okay. So the so other flip side is how much do we make on those ten thousand bags? Uh, that would be that number. Goes to five. It was about six times five. So it would be five. Twenty-five. How many percent? The bags are three dollars each. Twenty-five cents is one percent times eleven. Times eleven. So if we estimated for thirty thousand bags, we would get sixty thousand dollars in revenue. So we're making sixty thousand dollars instead of looking at what we're giving the people to do the job for us. Let's look at what we're going to make out of that, and we're asking them to do the job for us. But the problem also is that the townspeople now are going to have to pay for their 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 trash. They expect to see a corresponding reduction in their right. in their taxes. And right now we're giving them about fifty thousand dollars in saved tax revenue. And if we start, you know, spending. A lot I, hear, of I understand what you're saying. And I hear the number. If we say that's a lot of money, the flip side, it's a lot of work. And these people are trying to, you know, they have a business they're trying to conduct. And we, we're, even though they clearly, Karen will do it for free because that's what she, she's heavily invested in the community. But one of the things that I know, and I think we all know. There's only so much we can ask of good people before they become less than good people. Then maybe we ought to just sell them in the town for ourselves. Well, I think that she's she willing to do that. I think it's a 24-hour, it's a seven-day-week operation. I think that's fine. I think we should compensate them for it. Let me give you the cost that we have paid uh, for per, pa per bag. Uh, for the 15-gallon, we pay uh, 143.143. One, uh, that's one cent and 43 portions of another cent. No, uh, yeah, 14, 14 cents. That's 14 oh, cents. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's 14, okay. 14 cents. cents. And you're right. And for the uh, big, let's see, the big one, uh, 27 cents. Okay. For the wave top. Oh, wait. Uh, 16 cents for the wave top. 
The wave top and the wave top. So you look at yeah. this number 16 and 8 and look yeah. at this number 27. Right. So that's what we're, that's what we, that's, that's cost of manufacturing. Right. How do we split the difference? What was that? Split the difference? 12 cents? Oh. oh between the difference five and between 16 and No, no, between 5 and 25. No. Uh, between yeah, 25 cents. So you split the difference between 25 cents? 12 and a half cents. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's five and twenty-five, and so that was fifteen cents instead of twenty-five. No, that's not cutting it in half. He's starting five cents, and we're talking twenty-five. There's a difference of twenty cents between the two. Okay. I think no, Lex and Matt. I think Lex and Matt cut twenty-five cents in half. Oh, right. So what's the difference? That's twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Yeah. <laughs> How about ten cents? I, I like ten. Oh, I'm going ten cents. <laughs> ten cents is if you sell ten thousand bags, you're making a thousand. Uh, is that right? Two thousand bucks. Let's start with that. Which one? Ten. ten. <laughs> Let's go with the ten. What's, what, what's your thought? I make a motion that we compensate the vendors. Are there two? Two, yes. But if ten you, cents. If Gavin runs out, then they have to call me. Ten cents a bag. But you've got a profit. <laughs> no. Okay. I'll second that one. Do we have any further discussion? Yes, we do. You do? Yeah. Was it no? You. No it's discussion? No. It's just a reaction to the very original position that I think is too little, but move on. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, if we feel that it's, if it's becoming too burdensome from, for them, we can do another plan at another time. You can re re visit we the can issue. revisit the issue. How's that? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I would have gone with 15 cents myself, but uh, as long as we can revisit. We can, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think because I think, I think after a month we'll, we'll know from Karen and Ross and Bill what the, yeah. the real issue is. What the impact is, right? Really. Like, is it bringing customers into their store, for example? Well, that's one of the I reasons spending money. why yeah. uh, Ross and Bill, well, actually, Karen also felt that that well, would happen. Business, right. So there is some profitable. Because you come uh, with your kid, they want to the buy it's right there. So. Or gasoline. Right. The other store. The other store, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it isn't that they're just doing it out of the love of our town. There is some. That is a good <laughs> part. No, that's hard to believe. <laughs> no, I'm sure that is a component. Though. But the other is, thing we could do, I, I, I pointed out, is that we could say, uh, if we see that there's too much activity in the stores, maybe we could say we'll sell them for two seventy-five in the town offices, which might motivate people mm -hmm. to come yes, here. Yes, that is one. Of and the undercut the, uh, the this, I would go against that. I'm already struggling with having these people do the job, our job, anyhow. I'm certainly not going to allow well, we my little be, square here we that we little, undercut them. We could give you a little sign out here. I'm going to stand up walk up and down the street. Your, your job is zero. I want to I want to grow the public. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. And any further discussion? Or have we had enough discussion? Oh, yeah. All right. All the papers. I don't want to break with your <laughs> Okay. Uh, Judy, do you have any? I'm sorry, a little bit. I've got a question for Judy. <laughs> yes. Um, I've been asked for Would you like some help, for or would you like Mark to have some help during the first few days? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I actually plan to be there on uh, the wet first few days. So if any of you I'd like, to volu that. I'd like to volunteer if, if I could. I, I'd rather do it in such a way that you could get one, some time off. Right. But uh, I'd like to volunteer to help as well. Okay, well, maybe I'll have a schedule. Anybody else want to be up there and enjoy the party? I'd love to. I think it's important for Mark. Does it start the 29th or the 1st? The 1st. The 1st. The 1st. Yeah. I think but, Mark needs some backbone and some help. Yeah, he does. But the one nice thing is the 1st is on a Wednesday, and then we get two days off. <laughs> Recover. They like your wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday's off about a big character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess tell me, uh, are either of you willing to do that? If I can, I can all on a Wednesday. Two no. Uh, when, uh, when uh, the first? Anytime. If you I'm need help, be I'll, there the first. If you need help at any time, just let me know when. Okay. When you, I'll fill in if something comes. When I first. 
what I can do is write a schedule and uh, when is that? ask you when you can do it. That's a two yeah. to six show. Just a Monday, sorry. Andy probably can't because he's working now. Yeah. The yeah, weekend would be good. I could just like time. drive up on the world of bags and test it out. I know. Get your bags in. <laughs> just I'll come the day I'm there. <laughs> I'm loading my truck. If I'm there, I'm going to make the little one every day. Actually, I would expect you to know. There have been quite a few articles in the paper. I don't know if you've been reading them. Uh, so it's, it's really getting to be a high uh, visual. There was, a, there was an article in the Washington Post oh, yes, this morning. <laughs> Oh, really? That uh, talked about the whole recycling issue, oh, yeah. and they said it, it's oh, imploding. It is. It's it was on television the other yeah. day too. On yeah, the markets are going, right. going way down. Right. They're they're closing processing centers because there are millions of dollars in debt. Yeah. yeah. So might at the district, we're looking at what we really want to be processing more as well. Yeah. Yeah. So this whole thing might be for another. Oh, good. Another time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything else, Judy? Okay. I hope not. <laughs> Paul? I am so sorry, but I do. I know you do. Can you talk fast? I'll talk as fast as I can. Real fast, man. Just crank the speed up. All right, here's the thing. Really quickly, just really briefly, I talked to the gentleman involved with the fuel oil consolidation. Okay, the to, buying to get to the, that. to why Luke? Uh, what's his name? Who? Paul. Huh? What's his name? Yes. I asked yes. Paul to contact uh, somebody about fuel. We've been getting our contracts from Coda and Coda, and we fuel's going up, as everybody knows. So we're trying to get the best deal we can. And Paul has offered to um, research that for us. So go ahead, Paul. So anyway, to save a lot of this hassle for short time tonight, we are being included in their RFP that's going out this week. Okay, who is RFP? Um, it's being done through the Wyndham Central right. the Supervisor Unit, and we shot, we used about 4,280 gallons last year, so they're going to add our amount to their RFP, to, and it's going out to several agencies to find out who's going to give them the best price. He'll get back in touch with me when that sort of thing okay. happens. So Is that through the state? No, it's through Wyndham Regional. I mean, Wyndham Central has, it's kind of a that buyer's is. club. Oh, because it's not through the state. There was also something through the state. But it's through the regional yeah. supervisor union? I don't know. Which I know, because that's for? a school thing. Right. Yeah, but they're doing it for the towns as well. They, yeah. Right. Yeah. But oh, it's going God. through Wyndham Regional, isn't it? It's going through Wyndham Central. Wyndham Regional is, is a political entity. Wyndham Central is the school entity. Right, so it's going through the school entity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay? Yes. Now, I have one more thing that is... Um, Necessary because we have a time running out. I'll make this as quick as I can, but this is a little more complicated. We're talking about the bridge over the West River that gets us to the state park. There's been a lot of discussion on the table, around the table and around town about what the weights that can go over that bridge. And I've been doing a lot of research and I've been talking to a lot of people who's helped me with this, others have. And I have now, and it thanks to lose memory, a uh, survey that was done by the SVE Associates back in August of 2010 that gives me hard numbers on how much weight can go over over what kinds of trucks. There's two things happening right now. One thing is they've got some serious trees that have got them down, and the gentleman who was originally going to go do that has violated our rules no numerous times and, has, and continues to want to go and get these trees down. The state tells me they are going to put it out to bid. We don't know who they're going to get. The problem is, According to the, the, the engineers, the maximum amount of weight that can go across that bridge on a six axle trailer is 18 tons, 36,000 pounds. His truck, the crane, is 47,000 pounds. Now, you give me some numbers, you can take some stuff off and break it down to 43,000, it's still 43,000 pounds on a single lane wood deck bridge. So I've got some leeway that I can get, well, let me rephrase that before I get too far. We, the select board, have some leeway between the eight tons that it's posted at and how far we can get before the engineers expect it to come down. Having said that, when Mark Mann, uh, Matt Mann, did some, and he's doing some research on me as well, talked to the engineers, he said they're surprised that it hasn't come down yet. 
So it's not like this is arbitrary, it's just hypothetical stuff. We're talking about a little bridge that should it go down, is going to be an awful lot of inconvenience. To say nothing of old lawsuits and other stuff. So his vehicle doesn't make it. If they're going to cut down those trees, which by the way, should come down, I looked at them, they're massive, beautiful, gorgeous trees, mm -hmm. but their chunks falling off now, and if they come down, it's going to take out some of our residents' houses and possibly their children, depending on where they're standing at the time. So it needs to be done. Does it need to be done with this massive crane? I don't know. That's going to be the state trying to figure it out. On Tuesday, which is uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be meeting with a pre-bid meeting with the state uh, forestry people because, I mean the state uh, park people, because they're going to be having some work done to the state park that's going to involve changing their septic systems with the, uh, lots of heavy equipment and a lot of stuff. So tomorrow during their pre-bid, I'm going to be there to explain to the people who are bidding on this or about to bid on this that these have limitations on that bridge. They just cannot continually drive over. I've been asked multiple times, one time, ah, big deal. This gentleman's already been over twice so far this year and wants to go to the third time. These guys in the fall, I know, are going to be going back and forth. So we have to, we, the select board, have to decide whether or not we're going to enforce the weight limits as defined by the engineers that did the study in 2010. Parenthetically, Matt Man's going to check to make sure there isn't anything more up to date. And I should know more money. But this is 2010, it's not that long ago. Or are we, as a select board, since we don't have a road commissioner anymore, we as a select board make a decision to allow 47,000 pounds to go across that bridge. And that needs to be a select board decision, and we need to do it pretty soon, like tonight. Doesn't the state park have some interest in that bridge, like collapsing? They do. They do. And when they sent out the bids for the trees that were taken down earlier this month, they instructed their, their bidders to get wait permit permission from us. Nobody did. The guy who hauled the logs finally asked for permission after he'd done the job. And the guy who cut the logs never did. In fact, he's now asking for a third trip, and he has yet to file an official request for a wait permit. So, I put it to the, the, we need to decide, are we going to enforce the rules or not? Oh, that's all the guys on over. That's how we got out of that. Thank you. So, my, oh. my opinion is that we enforce the rule. The, I mean, yeah, the, 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 I said rule, I mean, engineering but, right. standards. But, yeah. What's is the worst thing, thing that can happen oh. if, we, if we let it happen? <laughs> uh, if, talking, no, you know, if, we, if we bar them. What's the worst thing that can happen? They have to use smaller trucks. Okay. And and how will the state handle that? They will put in, as I understand it from talking to them, they will explain in the RFP, Request for Proposals, that this job must be done with vehicles that meet the standards that we establish. So that means smaller trucks. In the case of the logging, they can take this big, massive, and it's a very nice machine, and it goes up and up off the tree off. It's really nice. It's called Fellow Buncher, yeah. Yeah, so whatever, what's it called? Fellow Buncher. Whatever, it's a lovely piece of equipment, because you and I went and met it. Yeah. Having said that, it's a lovely piece of equipment unless it's not falling through the boards. We have a wood deck single lane. Bridge. Don't we want a new bridge there? That's a hard way of getting it. <laughs> but then, you know, but, but I, and we've, we've talked about it before. Um, I talked to the road guy, I talked to the road guy, I talked to Keith, the road guy, I talked to Keith, and he said they purposefully go over, when they go over to plow these with small truck, when they have to sand, they wait until the sand load is down as well as they can, and it's the last place they go to sand. And he said even with that, it shakes the snow off the, off the rafters. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're making this up. So you have you talked to the state? Uh, hmm? You've talked to the state people. I, I talked to Matt, I talked to uh, Mark Pickering. Who said he really? What about the people? Now, isn't it the people from the forest parks and recreation? Oh, I talked no about the logging. I've talked to them. Um, Chuck Eddy is the guy who's in charge of all that. I've talked to him. I talked to Sheila. Okay, which so would it be? A, is it a problem for them to hire somebody or they they, hire somebody? they put out for an RFP? I have not heard yet what they got for bidding. Oh, okay. So there shouldn't be a problem then. There shouldn't be as long as they get people who are willing to go across. Right, right. Part of the issue is because if you're bidding on a project. 
and three or four people are bidding on the project, one of whom violates the rules, he kind of undercuts the other people. And so that's not particularly fair to them either. So I want to ensure that everybody's playing on the on field. At the same time, those trees have got to come down, I agree with that, but we take the trees down and risk the bridge. The bridge isn't going to collapse tomorrow, but what happens is every time this goes over, it weakens. It's just like bending any other piece of metal. So why just, don't we just wait for the, your, the copy of the RFP for the, uh, from the state, from the Parks and Recreation, make sure it's... Well, the RFP that they've sent out already to the state, mm -hmm. forestry people, mm -hmm. wherever they had to go out to, um, they should expect a decision. I kind of thought of here today, but I'll probably hear tomorrow, so I'll call them. Uh, who gets the bid? But I don't know who's going to get the bid. But is, isn't it I think up? I think I would let the state know that no no vehicle over the limits based on these on this report in fact, will be allowed. In fact, not just for this project, but for any project. In fact, when I used to be the road commissioner, I made that clear that the thirty-six thousand pound eighteen wheel, because it changes depending on the wheel, is the maximum absolute limit. And now I have nice little drawings and weights on these that I can adhere to. They are okay with that. They are going to write it as they did with this maximum. They did write it with. With, with what I told them, the I, I actually found this after. Okay, but, so in other words, yeah. the RFP so that has gone out is correct. Yes, that's my understanding. I can see it. That's my understanding. Okay. And then tomorrow, I'm, appeal, I'm going to make the briefing for the sewer project and get that on everybody's mind before they actually bid. Because this is a pre bid conference tomorrow. Okay. Now, what's with, this, hmm? what's with the sewer project? That's, what's, that's coming up in the fall. They have the same issue about bringing huge trucks with all kinds of concrete stuff over that same bridge. And so we're making it clear to them tomorrow that they have to do it with smaller vehicles. You can't bring four or five big chunks of concrete. You have to like maybe do one at a time. You know, one of the things one of the loggers have done over the past... the only season, thing we can do is tell them that we're going to abide, you know, they have to abide by our rules. And if they don't, I, I don't know what the consequences are. The consequences is if we see a truck that go over it, they get... Let me tell you the Let me tell you the consequences. The last time he did this, I got in touch with the state police who put me in touch with the commercial vehicle, I don't know, a bunch of guys that drive around in the DMV trucks. Oh, yeah. That particular day, they had something going up north and all the people were up there so they couldn't send anybody down. But they're the ones who make sure right, the DMV does, right, right. And it was pretty clear to all concerned that I was getting serious about this because this is like the third variation of this thing. But, since we don't have a road commissioner anymore, these decisions can't be made in 24 hours. We need as a board to make that decision. And then I, can, I will be more than happy to be your liaison with the road people and uh, ensure that this sort of thing, our collective will, is brought to their attention. Well, since you started working with them, I suggest you continue, but continue to let the board know what's happening um, so that we're all on the same page. Sure. Yeah, I'll be glad to do that. Just so I want to make sure that before I talk to this guy some more that we're all on the same page today. Now, do we need a resolution for that? Do we need a vote on that? Because this is a change in our policy. We haven't been enforcing it very well. And it's been a political fuzzy part about whether we're actually going to tell people they can't drive on that bridge. I think it's always been in place, so... Well, the sign's been there, but no one's ever enforced it. I asked, I asked this guy, yeah, I'm the first guy in the entire state of Vermont that's told us you can't drive a 47,000 pound truck on an eight ton bridge. He said, yeah. Well, okay. DOT won't enforce it. Well, and that's why I called them. And they said, oh, you can't come down there. We got something else going on. But at any rate, we just want to have a consensus that this board yeah. will support um, the standard as defined by SB in the 2010. Because well, we paid $6,000 for this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, I don't think we have to have a motion because no, we have it in our records that this is what we, these sure. are our standards and this is what we're going to go by. Okay, excellent. And we've issued all the way permits with these, in these conditions. Well, the permits that I've signed are all within these maximums. Like they're getting their logging, their, their firewood delivered is 21,000 pound truck. I mean, 21,000 pound load, which is in the, in the, in the parameters, it's over the eight, Limit, but it's within our parameters for, for our discretion. Yes, but do they then say, ah, oh, we're not going to pay attention to that, we're going to use this truck anyway? They may, and I'll meet them on the other side eventually when I can find somebody who's got a free day, come down and watch. Okay. You know? well, if you take photographs, I mean, 
I think that would help. I'm hoping that the, most of these guys are reasonable people. They're trying to do the right thing. And I don't think they want to do that, but sometimes you just have to explain what the reasonable position is. And no one has, apparently, in the past. Mm -hmm. So I am now designated a reasonable person. <laughs> Better vote on that one, huh, Alexa? No. What? Yeah. Well, most of our bridges You've are relatively it, short, 50 feet, 75 feet. This one's about 150 feet. This would be a hard one. This twice. is a very large, and it's yeah. our only steel bridge. It's got a wood deck. Trust people deep. living on one side of it. That goes down, they got to go. I think they come to Jamaica by way of Maine. This is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can get there from there. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's yeah. 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 We actually had a steel bridge while we were going over in the, the first uh, payment. West River. Uh, you know the concrete bridge that goes to East Jamaica during Route 30? Uh, yeah. That used to be one of the steel bridges. Yeah, steel bridge. Yeah. Steel bridge so. yeah. So, okay, so I have my marching orders. I will progress and oh, leave the rest of my stuff for later. So you resign as royal commissioner? It hasn't been approved yet, so... I have submitted He's my letter of well, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for some information before we go there. But I haven't gotten it. Yeah, well, uh -huh. I have my information. Just so you understand, the uh, Supreme Court of the State of Vermont has made it, uh, has allowed a personal lawsuit to go against a road commissioner. Not against the town, but against the commissioner because he put the rocks in the wrong place or something. I don't need the hassle. And according to the statute, okay, let's get going. is that enough? Not yet. So I have submitted my resignation as of last May. We're struggling with it. Uh, let me rephrase that. Right. I'm not struggling with it. But I'm looking for other answers. She's looking for a backdoor approach. Okay. Yeah. Are you all done? No, you cut me off. I'm going to tell you, it is getting late, but I'll shut up now. You're done? Uh, yeah. Okay, Andy? No, I have nothing. Okay, um, I have a couple things. One thing, and I should have asked when Judy was talking about transfer station. Um, the highway department, the office here, um, let's see, say the library. Are we charging them for the bags? No. They, they are no. town property. Okay, but uh, can they just use regular bags or are we yes. going to be using no, them? No, they have to have, they have those to bags. Use those, so we're going to lose right. money on those bags. Actually, I was talking to Terry, and what she's going to do is to make out a separate sheet indicating how many bags that we have given to them. Because we so want to make sure. sure. Yeah, that we make sure that, it go, that we're aware that we have given these and not expect money. Right, but I want to make sure that they understand that just because they're free to the right. town office and to everybody, that right. we can have 50 bags a week. Correct. Because Correct. that's a loss. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I think people will be reasonable about that. Uh, maybe the historical society will have some problems, but... Thanks. <laughs> yeah, take them to your office. Because we have the historical society, the highway department, the uh, Yeah, and the town hall. The town hall, uh, yeah. Bank. And the schools? And the school. Yeah. yeah well, just oh, the schools. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, the school yes. them. What we, that's, see, that's the, another the reason. The school's going to be a hard day. They, use, they go through a lot. Yeah. The, the advantage of the school, though, that I see, is that the kids are seeing these green bags right. and they're bringing that information home to their parents. That's already happening. Yeah. Because they have been, as a matter of fact, Kristen came up and met with me and we went and talked with the principal. Yes, and uh, And the program that they have up there is great. And they've been doing it for quite a while of uh, separating things out. So I, I think, you know, it's it's happening. But yeah, I think that we are going to have to find out from uh, Greg Sosin how many bags that he thinks. And right. of course, it's summertime, so he really won't have this won't, total yeah. hands hands on it. Um, okay, but yeah. All so, right, was just a question. Terry um, and I have been working on how to make sure we manage the finances on that. Um, um, I've passed out everybody to everyone um, a letter that we received from Cement Plant Solar from Boxford, Massachusetts. Um, they will probably be coming to our next meeting, but I thought if everybody would read this and then when they come, if you have questions, we won't be. Uh, 
so out of tune with it. Um, this is in, it'll be in Rossonville. It's for a private home or a private um, company. Uh, but when you read the, read the information, you know where it is. And then also, um, we received a uh, notification from Paul Gillies that um, Raymond Sadler, who owns property on College Hill, is filing a, has filed a lawsuit in Wyndham Superior Court in New Fane against the town of Jamaica, Ronald Patricia Knight, and John Hathaway and Joseph Lambert. And um, it's a declaratory judgment. Um, what, what is he suing the town? They were all filed yeah. or no. against each other? No, just uh, the Sadlers filed it against. Oh, against them. And it's when we had our meeting, I can make copies so you can look at it. Um, Paul Gilly said, filed the answer, we're just waiting for the next step. Um, I don't know what that will be right now. What is it about? It's about College Hill. Uh, oh, the when Knights we were up there, we were up there, the Knights has wanted okay. us to uh, terminate the um, trail. We didn't. The Sadlers now want the town to um, compensate. No, 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 no. To um, the amount of the the road, you know, the the footage, you know, where it goes, where it starts, where it ends. Apparently, there's some difficulty there. So, since it's a town trail. The town was involved in it, so Paul yeah. Gillies is our attorney on that one. Apparently, they filed the paperwork directly with Paul Gillies because we never received anything, mm -hmm. and he filed the answer, uh -huh. which I yeah. was kind of hoping we could dismiss it based on that, but probably yeah. not. Again, uh, you, you, you told me once, but I still don't remember or understand it. Why are they suing us? Why are we in part of this lawsuit? Because of the town trail, they yeah. want us to widen it. No, Do just work the it? amount of footage, the, the amount of. They don't agree with the fact that it's a, a town trail. They agree. With it. I'll make copies of that for you. We can read that. Yeah, over. that would be good. Um, they want us to uh, be definite on where it starts and where it ends, and how long it is. And our our, our maps aren't definite enough. I mean, anybody can follow generally, that. generally, that would be a survey that would do that work, and they have to pay a survey. Well, they're going to have to do. They're going to have to pay. They've got their own attorney, so. Yeah, there was there's this mark, and they surveyed it, and we went out and had a walk around, and it's just that they're in contest with each other, and we just happen to own a piece of property that they're mad about. It's unclear what, what this right. is going to be, but because we're named, because it's a town trail, we get involved. It's, it's clear when you stand there. That there's been some misappropriation. Well, we'll let the courts decide. Yeah, let them the work it out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have had a job as a fence watcher. Yes, yes. Fence watcher. No, what happened to our fence watcher? No, that's not a fence watcher oh, thing. No, it's not. Okay, I, I have nothing else. I make a motion to adjourn. Do a second. Oh, that sounds good. Exactly. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. Aye. aye.